you are switching into DevOps. And the most common fear I see is, I know what a CD is. I know what a CI is. I even know what's the difference between these two. But will I be able to crack the interviews? Will I be able to create the CI CD pipeline? Will I be able to work on the tasks given to me as a DevOps engineer? And honestly, the fear is valid. Because in DevOps, it's not just about knowing the concepts. You should also know how to implement them practically. You should know them hands-on step by step. Because every other organization uses its own set of technologies, its own set of tools, new pipelines, new everything. And you are the DevOps engineer who will be creating it. So that is why it is so important as a DevOps engineer, you should not only know about the concepts, you should also know how to implement these concepts practically. So if you are someone who felt the same way, then you are at the right place. Because in this series of videos, I'm going to walk you through 10 real world Kubernetes tasks that will be helpful in your interviews and also in your day to day tasks. So this is set one where I cover the first 10 questions of Kubernetes. And trust me, once you go through these questions, these will be so much more helpful in your interviews and also in your day to day tasks as a DevOps engineer. So hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tech World with Sahana and let's get started. As a DevOps engineer, you are given a task to configure for a Spring Boot application that needs to run as a single container pod exposing port 8080. How would you define the pod YAML? First, we will name our pod Spring Boot Dash App. Then, let's keep the container name something similar like Spring Boot Dash App Dash Container. We also need to specify the image. Suppose the image is stored in a container registry like a Docker Hub or a private registry. In my case, I am taking it my repo as we want Kubernetes to pull it from here. Then we can use Spring Boot Dash App colon 1.0. Here Spring Boot Dash App is the image name. 1.0 is the version tag and we will keep our container port 8080. As a DevOps engineer, you are given a task for your Node.js application that requires environment variables stored in a config map named Node Environment Config. How will you inject these variables into your pod? First, we will create a pod and define a container. Let's say the container name is app. It uses the official Node.js image. For example, we take uh, version 18. Now, since our application needs environment variables and those variables are stored in a config map called node env config. So we can inject them directly into the container using a env from field. And we refer to the config map by its name node env config using config map reference. This tells Kubernetes to load all the key value pairs from the config map as environment variables inside the container. As a DevOps engineer, you are often asked to keep your applications secure. That means you need to securely pass the database credentials into your pod YAML. Let's see how we can achieve that. In this case, we are using a container. Let's name it db-client and it's using the Postgres image. If we write the password directly into the pod YAML in the password field, we would expose a sensitive data. To avoid that, we store it securely in a Kubernetes secret named db-secret. And this is how your db-secret would look like. And this value right here is a base64 encoded version of Postgres pass. So that means we encoded our password using this particular echo command. Now to use this secret inside the container, we define an environment variable, say db underscore password and then use the value from and secret key reference field to pull the password value from the db dash secret. This way the actual password stays secure and is only injected into the container at runtime. 
Your application needs to run with guaranteed minimum CPU and memory of 250M and 256MI but should not exceed certain limits of 500M and 512MI. As a DevOps engineer, let's see how would you set this up. Inside the container block of your pod YAML, define the resource section. It has two main parts, request the minimum guaranteed CPU of memory and limit the maximum that is allowed to use. For our case, just put the minimum values under the resources and put the maximum value under limit. The monitoring team reports that production dashboard aren't showing any traffic or metrics for Nginx based web servers. But the application team insists everything is running fine. What would you do as a DevOps engineer in this scenario? Let me explain. First, we deploy a simple test pod that behaves like a production Nginx service. Get the default pod YAML and under the metadata section, add two labels, application, Nginx and environment production. Then apply and run the pod using the kubectl apply command. But if the pod shows up in Prometheus and still no metrics appear for your original application, then it's time to escalate to the application team. your DevOps interview, you are asked what feature of Kubernetes would you use to keep your environment specific settings separate. Let's take a real world scenario. Your production deployment is scheduled for tomorrow and suddenly the application team informs you that the application URL has changed. Now the qu real question is, are you going to rebuild the image triggering your CI again? No, that's not how we do it in Kubernetes because that's slow and inefficient. The feature that we use here is called config map. Let's understand the different file method. We keep two separate config map YAML files, one for test environment, config map test YAML, and the other one for production environment, config map prod YAML. Each file contains environment specific settings like app URL, DB host, app mode, log level. So we don't need to build our image again every time some config gets changed. So while deploying into production, first apply the config map prod YAML and then apply the deployment YAML. This ensures that the correct production settings are passed to the application via environment variables. You are asked in your DevOps interview, what node level changes would you do to improve the fault tolerance of your pod. Let's take a real world scenario. Your backend service has three replicas and by default, all the three pods might get scheduled on the same node. That's risky because if one node fails, whole system goes down. Question is, should you let Kubernetes schedule all your pods on the same nodes by default? No, that's not fault tolerance. And the feature we use here is pod anti-affinity. So we add this rule in the deployment YAML. This tells Kubernetes don't schedule this pod on a node that already has another pod with the label app backend. And this rule is checked only at the time of scheduling, but it is ignored when the pod is scheduled and starts running. So all your backend pods are scheduled across the nodes, reducing risk and improving high availability. In your DevOps interview, you are asked how would you handle sensitive data like database password, API keys, access token in Kubernetes. Let's understand this question real quick. Let's assume our project is microservice pe based hai. and every microservice jo hai, wo database ke connect with the database and for this we need to use username and password. Ki. But here's the challenge. You cannot store them inside your Docker image. You cannot hard code them inside your deployment YAML and you definitely cannot store them in Git. So the Kubernetes built-in feature we use is secrets. So we use secrets to store these sensitive data like DB password, API keys and access tokens all in base64 encoded format. This is not encryption but it keeps it from being readable at one glance. Here's how it works. Step 1. Create the secret. You can create a secret using kubectl CLI with kubectl create secret command. You can also verify the content in base64 encoded form with kubectl get secret db secret hyphen o YAML. Step number two, use the secret in your deployment YAML. There's one thing you should know. When you use from literal in Kubernetes, 
it automatically pays 64 and codes the password behind the scenes. So the password is not stored in a plain text in ETCD. In your DevOps interview, you are asked you did some changes in the secrets, but your pod didn't receive these new changes. How would you resolve this issue? Let's understand this question and its challenges. So you updated the secret, but Kubernetes doesn't automatically send these changes to your pod because see, your pod is already running and it won't receive the new changes that you did in your secrets or in any other YAML file. So what you do is you do a pod restart. So to do a pod restart, you could either do it with kubectl rollout restart command, or you can also delete the pod because it will start creating the pod with the new config. In your DevOps interview, you are asked, how would you mount a JSON config file to the container at a specific path? What feature of Kubernetes would you use? So the real question is, how would you mount an external file to, into the container without image rebuild? The feature we use here is config map with volume mount. Step number one, create a config map from the JSON file. You can either create it with kubectl create command, or you can also use a YAML to create it. Step number two, mount the config map as a volume in your deployment. With this, your container gets a JSON file at the exact path and you avoid baking into the image. So that is it for today. If you feel like doing 10 questions altogether is too much for you, do not worry because I have also broken them down into shorts. So you can do one question at a time at your own pace or you can also binge watch more than 10 questions altogether. And I have made it into a playlist. So I'll put that link in the description down below and also pin it in the comments. And do not forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon.